Hey everyone! In my previous tutorial video, I mentioned that that series in specific would not be covering specific patterns and delving into methodology. That will remain true, however, a few people expressed that they want something similar from me, since I'm a good source of methods and things like that. That works for me, and that's what this specific series will be covering. In this series, I'll be delving into top FCs from throughout the ages in the Guitar Hero and Clone Hero communities, whilst explaining and analyzing the methods specific players employ to hit certain sections, and how those players use their unique skill sets to tackle specific songs. With that said, what better FC to look at first than the original tappiest of boys? Toby GH3's Universe's FC from 2013. Before hopping into the FC itself, I'd like to talk about the skill sets Universe's makes use of. Universes is a track that increases in difficulty as the song progresses, has one strum in the beginning, and is more of a tapping stamina challenge than anything. That is what I would say if I was reviewing a Wii guitar FC of the song in modern day. This specific FC was done back on GH3 with an Explorer, and that changes a few things. For starters, limited pull rate on Explorers means inputs have to be more accurate on higher notes for second sections, such as Supernova and Big Bang. GH3's input reception engine also falls off when attempting to register notes behind the strike line in succession. This is what's known as a receding backend. Notes can be hit late, but the more notes that gets hit late, the tighter the window on the backend will be. This essentially limits Toby's inputs here to just the front end, which is around 120 ms on GH3. There's also a couple sections in specific that require lots of muscle memory burning to get consistent at, that being the strange sweeps in Triangulum, the trill bits in Omega Centauri, and most of the last two solos. But let's start from the beginning here. If I don't, uh, F if I don't FC up to Omega Centauri right now, I will quit this. Don't quit, please. For now, because this is senseless. It's not fun. What Toby's talking about here is a common thing that happens to players during longer grinds of FCs. With songs like Universes and other tapping stamina related songs, the longer the grind lasts, the more tired the muscle fibers that allow your fingers to move become. This, accompanied with the lack of breaks between runs and constant mental stimulation, causes direct muscle memory breakdown, leading to misses in much slower sections as well as frustration compounding with each miss the player gets in a section they'd otherwise hit with a completely fresh mind. I'm missing at like 10 notes per second still. For those unaware, 10 notes per second may sound like a funny thing to feel bad over missing, but in all actuality, 10 notes per second is much slower than you expect. This section here in the song is 10 notes per second, believe it or not, in comparison to the nearly 40 notes per second sweep and quad tapping that'll appear later in the song. This frustration is completely justified. A tip from me. For players who are going through these motions of continued misses on the slower sections during a grind, give yourself a minute to cool off instead of jumping right back into the grind, even if this means just setting your controller down and resting for a bit. Funnily enough, that's what I did with a Metallica AXS solo medley. At around the 2 hour mark of the stream I FC'd that on, I took a 10 minute rest and FC'd the song shortly after coming back. Don't underestimate the power of breaks and relaxation. It's honestly very interesting to me watching these older style methods being employed. Even if these taps are completely unnecessary and likely easier to one hand, older players had an aura over their methods that nowadays could just be said to be swag strats, or making a section harder to play just to make the visuals look cooler. This is one of my favorite things about Toby, his methods always looked clean and in control, even if they were over the top sometimes. Here's where it starts to get into more modernized tapping structure, but as you can see by his movements, he's hitting descending trips like descending trips and ascendings like ascendings. Most players nowadays will just use a zig style input for either form of triplet as it's just as consistent without the need for adjusting the angle or directional arm momentum. Another thing Toby's doing here is multiple one-hand inputs in a row to transition between tapping sections. While unnecessary by modern players in this scenario, this is a technique players like Randy and Sendit use quite often to readjust their tapping orientation. Something that may not be obvious just by watching FCs is how often a player will switch between standard method and reverse method. Standard method referring to accenting your tapping hand with each input, and reverse meaning the opposite. Some patterns are more consistent with reverse method, and some sections are more consistent with standard. Switching between standard and reverse is typically done by inputting two taps in a row instead of continuing the alt tapping motion, you'll see this later with his supernova method, or two frets in a row like is being done with this section. Getting used to having control over your input orientation is something that's very useful to get comfortable with, as it's used in most, if not all high tier songs. 
This is the triangulum section I was referring to earlier, and Toby's method for this section is extremely intriguing to watch. What he's essentially doing is splitting each motion into sets of three notes, turning what would normally be a ghosted sweep into a complex quad and triplet tapping section. Here's where we start to see Toby's raw method for Mysterious Passage, which is the incremental speed ladder section that shows up four times in this song. Modern players will slide tap this section, given the simplicity behind taking what's generally a three set pattern and turning it into a two set pattern with slower motions. The slide method for those unaware on the descending is an orange yellow descending tap followed by an index slide up to blue, followed by an ascending red yellow fret input. On the ascending is a yellow red descending tap with an index slide up to blue, followed by a yellow orange ascending fret. Given the time of this accomplishment, slide tapping wasn't really an option as it hadn't been adopted as a widespread usable method by the community yet. What this means is players were limited to treating the ladders as a six set disjointed triplet trill tapping sequence. Toby in specific appears to be breaking the section down into its visual orientation rather than its implied orientation, meaning he's treating the descending ladders as a trill and two ascending trips per cycle rather than three descending inputs. With each cycle of six motions, he'll tap orange, then fret yellow blue, then tap red yellow, then fret orange, then tap yellow blue, then fret red yellow and repeat. The same method is used in its inverse form for the ascending portion of the section. Here's Omega Centauri, the section Toby was talking about at the beginning of the run. Omega Centauri can be broken down into four parts. The first part is just sequential two set trills, which is fairly self-explanatory. The second part here can be broken into four set patterns. First is a descending castle. The inputs here would be an orange tap, a blue fret, a yellow tap, and a red fret, already oriented properly and ready to continue using standard method by the end of that sequence. Next is an ascending disjointed ladder castle. The two top notes here will be tapped and the two bottom will be fretted in an alternate fashion. The ascending ladder afterwards can be tapped the same way as the descending but inversed, and the last bit is the same as the second. The third part of Omega Centauri is just like the first, however the fourth part of this section is typically what trips most players up, as the inputs are much less self-explanatory based off looking at the pattern. What was done in the second part can also be done in this part, breaking the section into four set patterns and mentally accenting every fourth note or every second tap. This gives your mind the acre point it needs for figuring out the method. However, this isn't what Toby does here. It appears to me like he's hitting all yellow, blue, and orange inputs with his right hand and fretting every red input. This is something old players used to do for complex castle type patterns back in the day, as it made inputting them much less complex at the cost of requiring a higher physical speed. What follows Omega Centauri is the second to last solo, filled to the brim with slow lower style and timing intensive quad inputs, with bits of transitional tapping tech thrown in between to cap off each sequence. The methods are fairly self-explanatory by looking at Toby's fingers, so I won't explain much here, just understand that this section of the song is very missable, if timed slightly incorrectly. This is Mysterious Passage 4, incorrectly named Mysterious Passage 3 in the chart, which is a funny little typo people have given Adohu, the maker of this song, shit for for as long as the chart has existed. Just as explained in the actual Mysterious Passage 3 section, he's using the 6 set visual orientation method. What's impressive here is the complete and utter lack of ghosting. It's typically easier when doing the 6 set pattern to fret a blue with each single orange tap as that requires less dexterity between switching finger orientation. Toby's not doing that, he's raw dogging the method completely and doing it absolutely correct. An impressive feat of dexterity if nothing else. This section of sweeps here is called Gamma Ray Burst, and while there's many different methods possible for this section, Toby's using a 4 set zig method for each cycle, tapping blue orange blue, fretting yellow blue yellow, tapping red yellow red, then fretting red yellow to cap off the sequence. This is repeatable for the first part until the fourth cycle, in which the final fret has to include a blue fret to transition into the inverse sweep. The inverse sweep is the same as the original, just tapping the zigs on the inverse location of the fretboard. This section in itself isn't that difficult in the grand scheme of the final solo, however it's where the stamina will start to play a huge role in the player's ability to maintain the finger independence to fret the quads properly in Big Bang. Between Gamma Ray Burst and Supernova is a quick little triplet pattern to give a seamless transition between the wildly different methods required for both sections. It's called Dark Matter and it's mostly forgettable. The next section however is in my opinion the hardest section to FC with an explorer and typically in general of the full song. Supernova. The WTF sweep section on crack. This monstrosity of a pattern is a 13 set pattern, meaning the player will either have to learn two separate sets of 13 inputs per cycle, or double one hand slash double tap each cycle to maintain the same orientation. 
The latter is what Toby does, descending six quads downwards, swapping anchors downwards when necessary, double tapping two red-yellow zigs, then ascending six quads followed by a quad zig at the peak of the method to cycle the pattern. This incredibly complex sweep repeats eight times in this section, and it's where players feel the burn the most in terms of stamina. At the point where the ninth cycle would typically be, this section changes into an eight-set triplet pattern that transitions into Big Bang, the final section. This triplet pattern on its own is incredibly difficult to pull off under both the nerves of an FC run and the drained stamina of having to tap for as long as the song is. And finally, Big Bang. Universe FC, yes! Quotable reaction aside, take a look at how Toby inputs these quads. This shocked me looking back. Every single input is a descending quad, no quad zigs here. At this speed, fretting and tapping descending quads is borderline senseless, and yet, Toby did it, thus capping off this legendary accomplishment with extra style points. Overall, this accomplishment in specific is what I like to point to as the beginning of the modern community, as it sets in stone what it means to break barriers and try songs that most players find completely out of reach. I hope you enjoyed this video. Toby's original video will be linked in the description and I highly suggest you check it out. I do not suggest you look in the comment section however as this was posted during the Toby GH3 vs Guitar Hero Phenom era of community toxicity. That aside, this video was edited by my friend Sen Gaming. If you enjoyed his style of editing, please be sure to say so. I'll be testing the editing styles of many different individuals over the next coming months and I want to hear your feedback on what's good and what's improvable in terms of editing. For now, have a day. Yeah, I don't know either. Subscribe!